Welcome back. Today we're looking at the ViewSonic VP3256 4K Color Pro LCD Ultra HD monitor with HDR. Funny story, I knew the price of these monitors were a bit higher than usual, and I was only asking my wife, otherwise known as the domestic chief of staff, if I could get a color accurate monitor. I began to focus on the ViewSonic series of Pro monitors that some editors recommended on YouTube. My wife understands my struggles with color accuracy and I've done a few videos that mention my irritation with that. I still love my Samsung 49 inch super ultra wide monitor that I bought to mitigate some of that color shifting by being able to edit on a widescreen, but it's not color calibrated. It's a pretty popular video, so I'll link it down below for you to check out. My wife has it on her setup now and it is a sick gaming and productivity monitor, but I'm at the point now where I'm questioning color accuracy, and I don't trust myself to color grade, much less color correct. When I see most of my colors correct on a different viewing device, but then notice the skin tones look Martian, I get so unmotivated to create more content. It amazes me to see color inconsistencies between two or more monitors because every individual monitor I've had was different, despite the fact that they were the same model and manufacturer. I'm seeing color inconsistency everywhere nowadays, and I spent so much time finding a color accurate monitor that fits my budget, and I took a chance on these ViewSonic VP3256 4Ks. After finalizing my research, I told my wife this is the one. She then asked me the magic question, don't you need two? I played right into that, and I said, I would rather have accurate colors and be confined to one monitor instead of hurting our budget. I hope that my reverence for our finances will spark further concern for my visual health, and it did. She said I should get the two. I shook my head at the dent in our budget, but on the inside, so what are you getting here? First of all, you have a solid build quality with tiny bezels and a sturdy stand that allows for easy vertical or horizontal orientation. You can tilt it, swivel it, raise or lower it to your liking, and it has a 100 millimeter VESA mounting capability. But I'm pretty happy with the existing stand. The menu system is a multiple button configuration that I honestly don't like, but they did provide an option that I think you'll be very interested to see. You can install V Display Manager that gives you the same control on the screen as you would have on the back, saving you a ton of time and irritation trying to fiddle with those buttons. And by using this software, you gain the ability to split your screen up into small pre-designated segments to drag multiple windows for multitasking. However, you must have a good amount of memory available to run the controller in the background because it does lag the system down to just a hair. We have two HDMI ports, a display port, USB-B for pass-through, and two USB-A 3.1 ports, and my favorite, USB-C. They supplied every cable that the ports use, and with the USB-C, it can charge at 65 watts while transferring data, video, and audio. So, having my iPad connected and always charged, I can easily mirror it to compare video quality and project content from the iPad. So far, this is one of my favorite extra features, aside of the main reason to own these, which is just sheer color accuracy. The flat anti-glare IPS panel has a viewing angle of 178 degrees for both vertical and horizontal. The native resolution is 3840 by 2160, given that realistic 4K imagery. It comes with a surprisingly loud set of stereo speakers and are honestly not too bad. Check them out. This is not a light monitor, though weighing in at 24 pounds with the stand. You can find a screen shade and recommended monitor arm for mounting on their website if you're interested. Get ready to pause your screen, and I'll put a spec sheet up for you to see some of the more intricate details if you're interested. As for being a so-called 10-bit monitor, that's partly true with 8-bit plus FRC. 
And FRC is frame rate control, which is something used for what is called temporal dithering, which means pixels between 8-bit color and estimated 10-bit are shaded and blended to combine that simulated effect of a proper 10-bit color depth. That was a lot to remember. This is perfect for any content creator because true 10-bit not only costs a ridiculous amount, but is mainly used by Hollywood professionals that might have to pixel peep at 500 times magnification or more. As for Pantone approved, this is a worldwide standard palette of a thousand colors, which ensures all colors maintain their true definition of their intended global representation. Blue is blue, pink is pink, red is red, yellow is yellow, you get it. It is Delta E compliant, which also means that the colors displayed by shades and hues in comparison to what color is displayed are so minuscule that it surpasses what is identifiable by the human eye. Now that you know what you're getting, you might be asking what this monitor can do for you. Well, for me, I have so much more confidence when coloring my photos and video. This has allowed me to become a lot more creative with my content while also enjoying the process. Coloring video can be confusing and overwhelming. First, there is color correction. You can dial in with graphs, scopes, and meters for the most part, but then comes the fun part, color grading. So color correction and color grading are two main goals when shooting in flat profiles. If you're here watching at this point, I don't feel like I need to explain this further, but color grading is more of a subjective interpretation of stylizing your video and photos. And this is where LUTs come in. When I first started out, I could just slap on a LUT that YouTuber made and wonder why it didn't look good. This is because I failed to color correct my footage. Those days are over now because I'm able to make my own or at least achieve a certain look inspired by a movie or video. I made a two minute montage of some video highlights where I enjoyed playing with the color. So please let me know what you think in the comments and enjoy the next two minute clip. So, who is this monitor for? Well, to name a few, you got graphic designers, photographers, videographers, engineers, and anyone else trying to refine or calibrate and appreciate accurate colors and impressive clarity. If anything, you can at least start heading in the right direction towards whether or not you want to spend thousands or more on expensive editing monitors. This is about as far as I'll go for it. It's perfect for my need, but you may want to continue refining your skill set that could possibly land you that dream job making the big bucks. So I'll just tell you what I think of these monitors and 
Although slightly larger than I need, it is so worth having the comfort of knowing color is not an issue, and the outstanding clarity has made video discrepancies very evident. Now, if a video is too sharp, I can fix it. If the information can be recovered, I'll see it almost immediately. In gaming situations, they deliver sharp and accurate visuals that at least give me the feeling that I'm playing with a much more expensive gaming monitor, even though it's still only 60 hertz. But with 5 millisecond seek, it's responsive, and again, that color vibrancy is just next level. I don't regret buying these at all, and I highly recommend them to anyone except pro gamers. <laughs> As for the price, $500. I invested in a long-term tool that has reignited my love for video creation and comfort in knowing I am closer than most to getting those color accurate videos and photos. So if you have any questions, please ask them down below. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing. And if anything, just hit the like button to help me out on the channel. It sure goes a long way to help push the algorithm along. Thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day.